Alrighty guys, so I got something kind of cool here. Uh, this is a Charvel wild card number four. This is the Dead Calm Aqua. And I just recently acquired this. Um, obviously it's a 12 year old guitar and it's got, you know, the, um, the normal kind of wear and tear and dings and, and so forth that you find on, on a guitar without a pick guard. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, a, attempt to, uh, show you how I remove, uh, deep pick guard or pick swirl scratches that you see in these, in these models without a pick guard. And you can see there kind of over here in, in this area, how dull it is. And, uh, just kind of how, how scratched up it is from years of being played and it's all normal, but this is all surface. Uh, these are all just on the surface sitting on top of the clear coat and nothing's real deep. So I don't think we'll have any problems getting rid of it, but, um, it does take a little bit more aggressive polishing than what you can do by hand. Although you can take some of this level of pick scratches and things out by hand, it's just going to probably not be quite as, uh, quite as shiny when you get done. So to start with here, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to be using this Porter cable. Uh, this is an auto polisher here. Let me get a, got a model number here for you. 7424XP. Now, um, if you look these up, don't, don't fret at the cost. If you have any amount of guitars that you, you know, buy, sell, play, trade, collect, whatever, this thing will pay for itself. Now I've actually used this on multiple vehicles outside in the garage. I've buffed out a couple of our older vehicles with it. Um, a couple of my, uh, Frankenstrat videos, uh, you'll see me using this thing. A couple of my Charvel model two rebuild videos. You'll see me using this thing. So honestly, this thing has already paid for itself. I want to say it was like 150, uh, on Amazon. Okay. So you got to start with a good uh, proper uh, auto polisher to get this job done. Also, you'll notice that this is a variable speed, but it's random orbital. And that's important because a random orbital or a DA dual action will run basically in this random pattern up here. The pad will kind of just move all around randomly and what that does is it reduces the risk of burning through whether you're polishing a car and you've got clear coat. Um, if you're going to use like a drill bit or like a, like a high speed drill and let's see here, one of these, uh, one of these type of pads, which this is a really aggressive wool pad here. Let's see, let me get this out. You know, if one of these type that have like the chuck bit, and you put that in like a high speed drill, these things will flat out burn right through your clear coat and your paint and ruin what you're working on really quickly if you don't know the ins and outs of buffing. So we're gonna avoid that. This is a Velcro, uh, a hook and loop system, and we're gonna use two different types of pads. So these pads are always color coded in a system. I've got an orange pad, I've got a white pad. The orange pad is a medium to heavy cutting pad. The white pad is a light to medium polishing pad. So what I'm going to do is start off with the orange pad and some scratch X, and then I'm going to go over to some finishing compound with the white pad. And you, you don't want to like cross contaminate and use the same pad with both compounds because you're going to be leaving there's going to be residue from this compound and some pumice and and other you know ingredients from that stuck in this pad so you, i always try to keep these separated and know which ones i've used on with which pads so i'm going to take a minute to get set up i'm going to go ahead and remove all the strings i'm actually going to uh take the electronics off and just push them through into the cavity behind so we can have a nice flat surface here to work with. I'll get the uh, pickups. Uh, I'll just get them unscrewed. We're not unhooking anything electronically, but we just got to get it out of the way. So I'm going to do all that off camera, get set up, and then show you what we're going to do next. All right, so I got everything uh, removed 
and completely taped off and uh, sealed up so no compound uh, works its way in there. And to protect the top, you know, there's um, you've got the, the screw pieces and stuff on the back side of the, the bridge there. You don't want the bridge humbucker. You don't want that, you know, rubbing up against uh, the body. But uh, I thought I would show one more close up here of this side before we I figured I'd start over here first since this is where most of the problems are you can just see how much of that area is just covered in in pick marks so we're going to do our best here to see what will come out and uh, hopefully get a much nicer looking uh, guitar top all right I've gone ahead and taken the uh, the neck cradle out of the equation here. I didn't want the guitar propped up like that because we are going to be putting a little bit of weight, a little bit of downward pressure here. So I just didn't want to uh, introduce any kind of stress unnecessarily right here in the neck pocket and on the screws. And you could take this neck off, obviously. That's probably the best way to get this done. But um, I'm just going to leave it on. And since this is a, um, you know, a Strat headstock shape, I just flattened it out, uh, flattened the tuners out, so nothing was, you know, pointing uh, towards the bench there, and just put a rag under it. So now it's the whole guitar is actually laying nice and flat, and won't have any sort of pressure right here on this neck pocket. So, all right, so I've got the the orange pad. It's the medium cut. All right, it doesn't take much here. What we want to do is just get get a couple little drops like that on the pad. You don't want to go crazy. And uh, actually, I'm going to spread that around a little bit first. There. I just took a paper towel and just kind of blotted it down there. We don't want this stuff slinging everywhere. So just kind of rub it around. I've also taped off. The two Floyd posts, I've taped them down because they will start to back out with the vibrations. If you and I've le I'm leaving them in just to save the setup, but uh, sometimes if you if you don't tape them down and you and you do this, they can actually start to vibrate and and back themselves out. Best thing I can tell you with this, when anytime you're doing this, is to work um, work in a in a small manageable area and check your progress periodically just to make sure that you like what's going on, that you're not over overworking it. See, already we've got the pick swirls mostly gone, but there's still Still some scratching going on down in here. So we're going to keep going. And you don't have to keep loading up. You don't have to keep loading up the pad once it's once the compound is in there. So I'm going to increase the speed here too.
right, I am really happy with that. Bring you in for a closer look. You can see there's still some deeper scratches in there. Let me get the camera to behave here. There's still a few deeper scratches in there. Those would require some type of um, like finish sanding, you know, taking it down with like a 3000 grit over the top of all that. In this case, I don't think it's going to be worth it because there's still small dings like right in that reflection. I've got like four or five of them on around here. So to go through and there's actually like there's one like right there. Those kind of dings. I mean, there's really nothing you can do with those. So I'm not going to go super crazy, but wow, all of the um, all of that kind of haziness is now gone, and we haven't even done the compound or the uh, the McGuire's Ultimate. That's just the Scratch X. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this around, do the other side. All right, I've got it all flipped around. I've got the pickups laying over on the other side now. I've got just a few more dabs of the um, Scratch X, and here let me get this. Uh, this corner of the neck. You just don't want anything catching or burning on the corner of that fretboard there. This side's obviously not as bad. I'm gonna work that polish in. Looking great. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and do the back side off camera. It's pretty much the exact same process. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and switch over now. I've got the white pad loaded here, which is the polishing pad. And now we're gonna switch over to the Meguiar's Ultimate and we're also going to slow down the um, the speed setting here. So I've got a couple dabs of the polish. Just gonna go ahead and get this cord. Oh, there we go. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and change over the rags. So the idea here is basically to use a graduated system. You've got a pad, the orange pad, which is a little more coarse, which is a cutting pad. And you're using the scratch remover, which has, which has a heavier grit level to it. And then you're working your way to the softer white pad and also a finer polish that doesn't have near as much of the uh, pumice, the polishing 
uh, stone in the compound. All right, that's it for the polishing portion of this. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just sort of clean off the sides here. Uh, you can normally just do that uh, with your polishing rag, unless you've got some deep scratches and you can try to you know, maneuver the, the uh, polisher with one hand and hold the guitar body. But, but as, as you can see, there's a massive improvement. The, uh, the haziness, the cloudiness from all the pick swirls are gone. The only thing left are a few of those deeper scratches there but it looks a million times better and i just feel like you know it kind of rolls the clock back a little bit on some of these older guitars like this with the with the poly clear coats and and everything i mean i'm all, I'm all about the relic guitar look but on something like this it's nice to have some of the uh, shine restored back and that system really seems to work well uh, one last quick pointer you can uh, when this when this whole process is done, you can go back over it here with a um, like a spray wax. You get a better image there. I just like to use some of the automotive products. You know, wipe on, um, polish it right off, or let's see here, using you know some of this these type of products is fine too. It just helps uh, remove any other residue that may have been left behind from the compound. So uh, you don't have to stop there after the polishing. You can definitely wax it, of course, just keep in mind if you start spraying, you know, a wax product, it is going to make this um, surface a lot more slick. So you want to be careful down here, uh, like where it would sit on a, on a knee, you know, you don't want it just sliding off all the time. So I usually avoid those areas, but uh, anyway, you can uh, finish it off with that and give it that final touch. And here is a final look at how this turned out in more of a natural lighting scenario it's just a massive improvement over the original condition that I received this in all of those hazy pick swirl we call them pick swirls pick scrapes and scratches are I would say 90% gone and all in all it just looks much better than what it did before there again just kind of turning back the clock a little bit making it look as nice as it possibly can with that durable poly finish give you a look here this headstock with the cool the wild card number four dead calm aqua teal charvel logo just looks much better after that compound treatment so Hope you guys enjoyed. Please feel free to ask any questions down in the comments below. And uh, stay tuned for more videos. Take care and see you on the next one.